In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a very beautiful puff sleeve with a piped edge, just like this one. I'm Marina from Fox and Frolics, and in this video, I'm going to use, of course, one of my own patterns, which got a little bit of gathers at the hem as well. But if you are just here for the method, you can use this without the gathers. Of course, the method stays the same. When you're putting in a sleeve, make sure you have a right sleeve and a left sleeve. That means they're mirror image. And then we're going to learn just how to put that piping on so it looks really, really good. First of all, we've got to make the piping and you can cut yourself some bias first. And then you can use a rather slim cord, piping cord. I'm using a very slim cord here and I've actually changed that later and made it a little bit thicker. So what you want to do is put your piping cord in the center of your bias binding and the good side of the fabric obviously faces the outside. And then with your piping foot, and I'm working with a puff piping foot, but you could also do it with a zipper foot. And you just make sure that you go quite close to your piping. Um, you can go even closer with the later steps, just to make sure that the stitching doesn't show. But if you have a piping foot, you can just use the same stitch setting. So on your sewing machine, you might have to move the needle over a bit um, so that it comes out right. Maybe do a few trial runs until you get a really nice and neat finish for your piping. Then you want to cut back the piping. Uh, in my case, I always prefer to make the bias binding wider than I need to have it. So this is cut three centimeters. And then when it's folded over, I've got quite a lot that I can still cut off. And I'm aiming for a centimeter seam allowance. If it's a little bit more or less, it doesn't really matter too much. It's it's okay. Yeah. Um, is the sleeve, you know, is the hem like... Is it one millimeter longer or two millimeters shorter or whatever? It doesn't really matter. It'll look fairly much the same. So in my case, because this particular sleeve is gathered at the lower edge, I need to put in my gather threads, one close to the edge up to the points that we've marked on the fabric. And then I do it foot width next to that again. And then I can gather that before I put the piping on. So if you're using my pattern, yep, that's what you have to do. And you will find the exact measurements of how much you have to gather or rather how long the distance is for the underarm here. That length, that is in your ebook so you can test it. But basically, if you gather this as much as it will go. It's usually right. So um, that's how I made this pattern so that that would be very densely gathered. But once you have done that and you need to make sure that the silk doesn't do pleating instead of gathers, um, it likes to do that. It's really annoying, <laughs> but it does do that. So I spend some time sorting out my gathers there and then you can just measure that through to make sure that it's got the length that you need you can also try it on the little girl's arm to see if it's tight enough or too tight you know it doesn't matter here if it's not quite like the pattern the important thing is that it's comfortable to wear and um, it might be a good idea if you're making this either for your little shop or you're making it for an occasion and you're not there that you get mum to measure around the um, biceps and say, well, how much have I got? And you want to have, um, I would say, four to five centimeters room would be a good thing. There's nothing worse than an arm that is too tight. And then we do the same with the other sleeve and, of course, with the lining. And now we're ready. We can put our piping on. And it's really simple. You put the piping straight to the edge so the right sides are together. Well, the piping, obviously, right side. And then, um, you know, the good side of the fabric needs to be facing up. That is not always that easy to see with silk. So you have to be careful that you don't end up with two left or right sleeves. And then you go all the way to the end. 
Uh, I have to say that I do like my puff piping foot. I find them actually the best. And nobody ever pays me to say this or anything. Puff doesn't do any sponsorships with me. What a shame. <laughs> I wish I would. But um, I do find all the attachments work really, really well. And I love my sewing machine. And I've actually got two puff machines. Um, and then the next one you can put straight under so you don't waste any. And make sure that the lining has the same, you know, it's the same length as well. And then we can sew it together. Now it's quite important when you sew that lower edge together that you do it from the side where you've already sewn because you can see what you're doing. So um, we're going to put this together like this. And then I can just let the piping foot run over it again. And that will automatically be right again as well. It's like really cool. And in a minute, you will see that my piping looks a little bit thicker. And that's because I decided, no, it was too slim. I opened it all back up and I did it again because obviously this was for a client. So it went out. And at the end, you see the dress again with the lovely jacket. And I wanted it to be perfect. And I decided that my piping cord was too thin so I just did it which is what which is what you sometimes have to do when you make a little mistake or uh, an error in judgment so I'm cutting off my threads you can see it here really nicely how my piping is now sandwiched in between the two layers and now I want to make sure that my lining can't show so we're going to under stitch this and that means that my seam will face into the lining and then I'm stitching very closely to my piping and that will under stitch this part and make sure that the lining will never roll out. Yeah, that stitch line will hold it in place. And it'll give this lovely volume to have this lined. And I'll never do that. There we go. Now we're going to do the side seams of the sleeve. Now what's important is that you remove the piping cord where we've got the seam. Otherwise it's going to be really thick and horrible. So pull out the piping cord a little bit more than your seam allowance. And cut it off on both sides. That makes it really nice and flat. I can then put the rough edges on top of each other make sure that where we have the piping that that all lines up and then I can pin my side seams sew them together and I have done my sleeve um, there are some people that close that underarm seam first and then try to put the piping on and that is way way harder than this method so this works really well Make sure that you snip in here because that very often causes tension. Cut back your seam allowances. Open out that little seam. You don't even have to iron it at this stage at all. You open it out, you fold it up, and now you pin it together so that all the rough edges are on top of each other. Sew once around. And then all we have to do is put the gather stitches into the sleeve head as well so that when we put it in, we can um, gather it as we do that. And it really came out absolutely beautiful, as you can see here. It is a very nice method, actually not difficult. And you can also, of course, get finished piping if that's what you want um, up to you. A sleeve is always cut away a little bit more in the front, so you should also have a snip there telling you which is the front. So put, in this case, my left arm went through the sleeve to the left arm hole, and then I know it's correct. I put the underarm sleeve and the side seam on top of each other, find the snip for the shoulder on the sleeve, put that onto the shoulder seam as well, and then I start pinning in the lower part of the sleeve. And what's really important is that you have no tension in here and that you slightly roll the sleeve over the jacket. I have often seen people when they were making these jackets in my courses that there was like little pleats in the jacket. That happens really easy if you um, just hold it straight. It's very important. You can see here it's my 
index finger of the left hand, it's always slightly under the fabric and it rounds it slightly. And that makes sure that those little pleats that you sometimes get just cannot happen. And I do that on both sides. And then we can get to the fun part where we gather the top in and that gives you that lovely volume. And um, this pattern for this particular sleeve comes with a flower girl dress as well. It's not quite as big as the one I'm showing here, but it's trust me, it's big enough. Um, that is the sleeve from the bolero jacket, which I here put into the Paris bolero, which has a shawl collar, so it's slightly different but they are all interchangeable those sleeves which is quite nice but they're not quite the same so really big sleeve on the bolero slightly smaller on the flower girl um, dress but you could also put that into a jacket if you wanted to um, there's lots you can do now i gathered four centimeters towards the front and four centimeters towards the back i usually do less than that um, in this case because it's such a big sleeve uh, I went for four centimeters and it really is is a cracker it really is nice and then you kind of stretch it out again so that you get no tightness again that's so important because it's annoying when you get that and um, you know you have to redo your stuff measure again the four centimeters super simple then I can take the pin out of the shoulder and just pin this in properly and then I can check from the outside whether it's good or not because once you turn it you will see what it's like there we go so turn it have a quick look look at that sleeve it really is awesome and the silk I'm using is Dupion silk by the way now you will start sewing where you have a straight area but don't start on your gathers, very important. And then make sure that nothing pleats underneath it. You want to go round really, you know, carefully. Take your time, nothing worse with silk than something catching. And make sure that, uh, you know, you have no pleats underneath it because silk is really delicate and you don't want, you know, any um, stitching that afterwards when you have to you know take things apart and put back together that you see the holes in it okay so you work your way all the way around and that really will conclude this part here this is part of the flower girl dress sewing course which comes with um, quite a few videos and of course a really good ebook so if you are a sewist and somebody says can you make my flower girl dresses um, you can say yes, and I can make them either with puff sleeves in the jacket or the dress. I am there, I can do it. So that would be great. Don't forget to share what you make. I wish you all the success in the world by helping someone make their special day and the best day ever by creating these beautiful flower girl dresses and jackets. Bye for now. See you soon at frogsandfrolics.com.